Silverstone, the home of British motorsport. Except for today, when it's come down with quite a serious case of Tifosi. Hi guys, I'm your friendly neighbourhood Benzene Ben and welcome to Silverstone where we are at Ferrari Racing Days as you can hear behind me. Now the prancing horse Mark is putting on a buffet of automotive treats for us today. We've got the XX cars, we've got Ferrari F1 cars, we've got Ferrari Challenge cars and as you can see everyone's brought their road car along as well. So we're going to head over to the new pit lane and see what's going on. Let's go. Just about everything here, F12, 328 GTS, 430, 360 Spider, 430s, everything pretty much you could name. Holy mother of God, you forget how loud those engines were before the switch to the 1.6 litres and they sound so this no Ben don't get distracted focus okay Whew. different cars absolutely everywhere here we have F12 FF 488 458 430 and then rather amusingly in this Dino it's a very important notice 360 CS, very nice. We're now in the exclusive Ferrari parking area where all the best bits are. So I'm gonna do my best to show you a few of the highlights of this little parking area. 458 Speciale with Tricolori details on it. Pretty cool if you ask me. Really lovely deep red colour on the loose though. But spinning around over here, we have a really bright 430 Scuderia. Yellow with the silver stripes. I really like the black borders to the stripes, really pops that out. And I also really love a good scud. A 575M. You don't see too, too many of these around. Quite nice to see. Like I say, there is absolutely all sorts here today. Another Speciale, different kind of stripe, mixing it up. Another Challenge Stradale, F12, F12. spec on this TDF. Silver with the blue stripe, very mature. Always interesting to see a very sort of classy spec on a completely bonkers car. Shame to see that leave though. Down at the business end then we have a trio of 599 GTOs. Absolutely stunning. I think my favourite is the dark red one in the middle. Also in this car park, my personal favourite, the Ferrari F40. And Enzo has arrived. And what's this we have tucked away here? A 458 Speciale Aperta. So only 499 of these in the world. The convertible version of the 458 Speciale. Lovely blue colour as well, really stands out. And of course, Speciali Stripe. Preparations are underway for the XX program session. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's where Ferrari take their most extreme road cars 
throw road legal rules out the window and just do whatever the hell they like. So these cars are not for road use, they're track only, but because of that they have extended front splitters, dive planes, wings that hang over the back of the car. These cars are nuts! <laughs> XX program cars is getting ready to go out. The 599XX and the FXX. Still the odd FXXK going through the pit lane. Have a little wander into this pit box and get up a bit closer with some of the XX cars. Starting off here with the FXX Evolution. This is the upgraded and modified FXX that came from the Enzo. So what we're looking at here is a total of 850 horsepower. That's about 200 horsepower over the standard Enzo. This is where they finally got to after all sorts of small modifications and upgrades to the FXX and what a product they finished with. And just look at the shapes and lines on this thing. The nose comes down for that bit of extra front aero and it's such an aggressive looking car. Here we have a 599XX, of course the XX version of the 599. This was 720 horsepower, over 100 horsepower up on the standard 599. So it's already quite a beast of a car. But then you take that and you go one step further to the 599XX Evolution. You lose 35 kilograms of weight, you add in an extra 20 horsepower, along with an absolutely insane rear wing. I mean, I think Mansory would be ashamed of that. And last, but certainly not least, the FXXK. The XX program's answer to the Ferrari LaFerrari. So they take the standard car, which is 963 horsepower, and shoot that up to 1036 horsepower. Almost makes the standard car sound a bit pedestrian with its mere three-figure horsepower sum. But again, look at the road illegal aero going on, hanging back over the back bumper. Crazy looking wing on this thing. 
taking a look inside, we can see just how stripped out it is. Head support extended into the middle of the car for the passenger and the same on the driver's side. We have a driver focused control panel here in the middle. Uh, even with different curves settings you can see there, kinetic energy recovery system. Uh, a pit lane speed limiter, launch control and reverse. The wheel will be familiar to any Ferrari drivers out there as it features many of the same functions. Engine start, indicators in the centre. Not sure if that initiates bumpy road mode but it may change some of your suspension settings. Some traction control settings there not labelled as comfort and normal etc but just one to four with off and then instead of horns I can only imagine those deploy your curves. I'll be very disappointed to find out they do anything else other than that. Now as far as I'm aware there isn't a FXXK Evolution yet. Maybe that's something in the works. Um, I will be asking Ferrari representatives next time I see them but I can only imagine what such a thing would look and feel like. Wandering back through this car park, there's a few new additions. A different TDF has arrived, looking very, very nice there. And then if we wander over this way, past the 430 Scuderia and the 355, we have something quite relevant. A 612 Scaglietti Sessanta edition. Now Sessanta means 60 in Italian and this car was built to commemorate the 60th anniversary. And of course this year being the 70th anniversary, uh, it's quite appropriate to have that here for the day. Let's take a look at some of the Formula One cars then before they head out on track. But first, just have a look how much kit they bring with them all these boxes of tools and spares and then just piles and piles and piles of fresh rubber brand new tires for them to stick on so this one right in front of us is a 2002 uh, the one alongside it is a 2003 uh, the easy way to tell these cars is the narrow front wing with a fairly simplistic design and then between them at the back is a 2005 again with a pretty narrow front wing but a bit more of a, a complex aero package going on there incredible to think that these cars are well over 10 years old now moving down here there's a 2008 and then two 2009s and a 2010 over there. So this is one of the 2009s. Um, little look in the cockpit. This 2008 car you can actually see it was driven by Kimi Raikkonen. Again, fairly narrow wing on the 2008 before they went wide for the 2009s. But again, you can see the aero on this is more complicated than the 2005 car with the narrow wing we saw earlier. The other 2009 at the back there, the F60 as it was designated. And then our 2010 car here with a rather famous driver's name on the headrest. The F1 cars are getting ready for their second session of the day. I cannot wait to hear them out on track again. After that little taster of them when I arrived earlier, just hearing those V8 and V10 engines sing around this Silverstone circuit, what a special thing to behold. It's like being transported 10, 15 years back in time to the golden age in the modern era, I'd say, of Formula One. So let's go and see what's happening.
cars are getting ready to go and do a parade lap and just look what's here. You probably already know that it's Ferrari's 70th anniversary this year. They've been celebrating in style for a number of months now and today is no exception either. They've got this huge parade of driver's cars heading along the grid now. Just look at this, it's absolute madness. Is this not the best looking traffic jam in the world? Down at the sharp end of the grid then is where things get really special. So starting off here we have the 458 Speciale Aperta that we saw earlier. Extremely pretty car. And then we have the Enzo. The grandfather of the LaFerrari. Always nice to see an Enzo out and about. And then the 599 GTO over here. Very bright, almost orangish red. Just in front of that, we have a LaFerrari. All in black. Red LaFerrari in front of that. F40 in the middle of the second row and the 812 Superfast. After you've destroyed your tyres racing around the track, you can just come and get a new pair fitted here. Casual F1 wheel on the ground there. But uh, yeah, fresh set of sticky boots here at the Pirelli tent. And if you think they might run out, well, guess again. Now we come to the Ferrari Challenge cars. Here at the very start of the line we have the 348 Challenge and heading on down the 355, the 360, the 430 and the 458 at the ends that we'll look at in a moment. So these are the cars Ferrari builds for its one make series that customers can buy and race in. They make their own rules so they can make the cars exactly as they please. However, these are pretty similar to the road cars that bear the same name. They have the same engine, power output, etc. So really it's only a few extra weight saving things, taking out the interior, radio, things you don't need on the track like that, and adding some aero as well as we see here on the 458. We've got a nice little front lip splitter there to help with front downforce and a whopping great wing on the back. Now as we'll see as we walk around, the interior of the car is pretty stripped out. We have these sections here on the window that the driver can reach through and grab anything he needs from his pit crew, a water bottle or something. Uh, fire extinguisher down there in the passenger footwell, so gone are your GT cruising comforts and instead you have a fully stripped out race car. Now, like I said, the, the power is the same as the road car. So in a Speciale, you're actually running sort of 27 more horsepower or whatever it is than, than something like this. But um, I fancy this would go around a track quicker than a Speciale. And we're gonna be seeing them racing in not too long. A quick look then at the 488 Challenge car before it heads out on track. And I think visually, this car is the most different from its road car counterpart. You can see quite a number of aero upgrades, dive planes around the front, extended lip splitter, a completely different central frontal part, scoops in the bonnet for hot exhaust gases from the radiator, and then coming round to the side as well, can see around the back there's this enormous wing a ton of different settings for altering the angle of the wing for high downforce or low downforce circuits and just like the other challenge cars it is completely stripped out in here so as you can see just switches and dials for the driver and a couple of sets of five point harnesses safety car just leading out the green flag lap then for the Ferrari Challenge Copper Shell. Bit of weaving and tyre warming going on. 
Challenge races have finished. Really cool series from Ferrari, I think. I think it's really great how they have the two different divisions, the Trofeo Pirelli and the Copper Shell, splitting up the pro drivers and the gentleman drivers, respectively. So clients can come and have a bit of a race against people like them, Ferrari owners, someone on their own skill level, and they can go door to door with them. I think that's really cool for us to see. bonkers cars when you see them static never mind about thumping around the racetrack that was awesome then we had the simply incredible sounding f1 engines 2002 to 2010 just an awesome engine though really makes me miss that and then we finished off with a bit of door-to-door -door track action a race with the ferrari challenge series i've really enjoyed today seen a lot of awesome cars Met a few of you guys, a few of you even recognised me with the new aero package. So well done to you. But I'm going to wrap it up there and I will hopefully see you in the next one from somewhere in the world, hopefully another racetrack. So thank you very much for watching guys. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll see you again soon. Choo!